Howdy folks, now I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered what happens to this stuff? Net wrap and indeed bow twine after it's been used. Well, in this video, we are gonna find out. So to do that, I've gone into partnership with Tama. Now, Tama are the world's leading crop protection specialists. And I've been using their products for years. And we still use Tama Net edge to edge on our round bowels today. So number one is quite often, it gets left in the yard for either the mucks ready to find or the cows to eat. Neither options are very good, are they? And number two, well, no doubt there's some folk out there that still think it's okay to burn your plastics which it really really isn't this day and age then you've got number three which is what we do um, basically we put well we separate the twine the net wrap and uh, stretch film put them into different uh, big bags that gets collected and then sent to landfill again not very good is it though but there is a fourth way now um, and all this plastic waste you see here uh, and there's 50,000 tonnes of it in the UK every year, farm plastics. Uh, this being just obviously a small portion of it, can now be recycled. Rather than going to landfill, it buried underground, incinerated, being the end of its life, it's just the beginning. Now, Tamra have gone into a partnership with a company called Helix. Now, Helix are at the forefront of their field in recycling. Um, they are the only company that are taking used farm plastics uh, like twine and net wrap and are making brand new plastic polymers out of them transforming them into basically brand new plastic as good as virgin polymers so let's go to Helix's factory now in the Netherlands and see how they do it So guys, we are at Helix in uh, Maastricht in the Netherlands. Now, before we go in and start looking around the factory, um, just want to have a look at these bales that have been brought in. Now, these are net wrap bales. Obviously, you know, these have been tied up with uh, metal wire, so obviously they can be transported. Look at this. Got all the straw in here. Now, there's, there's two problems with this. One problem is a major problem for Helix because they have to get all this straw out of this net wrap as it's in big bales. But the other problem is for the farmers, for like myself, back at home, why are you sending off net wrap that's picked up by the ton? Why are you sending off it all soiled up? Silage, straw, hay, dirt, moisture. That all increases the price per tonne. So as it stands, these bales are coming in, only 30% of it is actually net wrap. The rest of it is soilage. Right, we're gonna do a quick test. I've got my weigher here. Right, time for the heavily soiled net wrap. 0.93, nearly a kilogram in weight. Now, let's see what we can get that down to. Now this would be unnecessarily hard work for the chaps at Helix to clean. I mean, it's got to be a lot easier for them, and we can make it easier. So, again, we're going to just do the old flick, and we'll see what we get out. Again, it's easier to do this after you just took it off the bow, rather than, you know, doing it after it's gone in the bag. Look at that, that's... And took me long to do that. Look at it. Now that, yes, again, there's still a bit of straw in there, but it's a lot, lot better. It is still moist and dirty, as you can see. As part of the process at Helix, these do get washed anyway. Um, but obviously, it's a lot easier for them to wash it when it's, you know, lightly sawed, rather than big clumps of muck hanging off it, or lots of straw. So let's weigh this again and see what we've lost. It feels a lot, a lot lighter. It was 0.93 of a kilogram. See what it is now? Now 0.39. So more than halved it again. We've halved it. A lot of perception is plastic is plastic, you know. But it ain't. There's various different. 
types of plastic and net wrap and twine are two different types. They cannot be mixed. They cannot be mixed and refined back into or transformed back into pristine uh, polymer. So these have to be separated. It's got to be easier to do it at source, isn't it? Put the net wrap in one bag, put the string in another, you stretch, stretch film in another. It saves, it saves all this mess. Look at it. This is the main shredder. Obviously you can see the twine going up there, drops into the hopper. There's a big rotating drum in there. And that's shredding the, shredding the twine. It drops out there. It then goes up the conveyor and gets moving up. This is the air filtration system for the factory. It does 10,000 cubic meters of air an hour, I think, which is why it's such a clean factory. There's not a lot of dust about. But, I mean, look, you look down the far end of the factory, nice and clean. Very impressive. Now, this bit of kit here is, obviously, it's a hydraulic shear. See the blade down here. Now what's that? What that is for is like when you've seen the guys put the bows of twine on the initial conveyor, sometimes when they go in in big lumps into the shredder, it can cause blockages. So the idea with this is they're going to integrate this into the system so this will shear the bales into say four smaller bales so that it's, it makes the rest of the process easier. it's been through the first cutter so it's still it's net wrap it's not nice stuff but it's chopped it a bit so we'll go to the second cutter so that's through the second cut so it's chopped it a bit more storage area of the factory all these big one ton bags you see around here are full of finished products a brand new transformed polymer that can be used to create new twine so we're in the lab now which is the most important area because this is where helix can tell 
the actual quality of the polymers they've produced. We take a sample from every big bag. Yeah. Um, because we did a lot of measurements now, uh, we see that the quality is very stable. Yeah. So we agreed that we make a mixed sample of every five big bags. And so every five big bags, the mixed sample is measured. Yeah. In the measurements, we see that everything is uh, between the sp uh, specifications that we, we give you uh, to, to, to have this yeah. real material. So it's as good as, as good as virgin yeah. polymer. Yeah. And you can. All these tests confirm yeah. that, basically. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Right. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Now, how good was that? I absolutely love a factory tour. Uh, that was one of the most interesting factories I've ever been around. So, big thanks to Tama and indeed Helix for, you know, letting not only me go around the factory, but allowing me to share it with you guys. You see, that's where, you know, supporting the channel, you know, it helps provide these opportunities for me and, for, like I say, for you as well, because, you know, I'm bringing you along with me. So, the more you support the channel, giving the old likes and uh, commenting and that, the more we can go on cracking adventures like that. So, apart from ever obviously having a great look around a factory, a real nice factory, what else was, you know, what did I learn? Well, there's a few questions I asked whilst I was there. One of them was, you know, does this recycled, you know, plastic and, uh, you know, when it gets into a, you know, um, the string and the net, you know, is it as good? Because, you know, a lot of perception is that um, recycled stuff isn't as good as, you know, the, the you yeah, know, the, the virgin stuff, the, yeah, the brand new stuff. Um, but, um, you know, Helix well, and Tama both assure me, because obviously they do all the tests, and we see um, the lab at Helix. Hi, got a new job. You know, they do all the tests to verify, you know, they can look at it on a molecular level, so they can, they can tell that it's, you know, it's a perfect product, and it's as good as what, you know, what you get out of the ground. So, there's no issues there and obviously you know when he you know after helix send it to tama tama then do their own um tests on it like they would for um you know the virgin stuff so to know they've got the quality because that's you know that's what counts that's why people buy tama stuff because it's you know it's quality it's why we have edge to edge like you know um and the same sort of goes for the color because obviously you see the color of the twine, it's not the same colour as you know what we normally have. You know, in this country, you know, normally, normally standard twine is sort of orange. You know, the rusty colour. Um, but of course, it all depends on what you know string is going through the factory at the time. You know, you can't sort out every different colour string that's going through the factory. So you can have you know orange, green, white, um, blue, whatever. So it's whatever's going through. And again, it doesn't make a difference. You know, there's no there's no difference in you know in the quality, no matter what colour it is. So um, apart from the fact it does, you know, identify itself as um, you know recycled twine because you know it's blue. It's you know it's not a you know a standard um, you know string colour that you'd be you know used to. And you know we're going to be using. Um, this stuff more and more anyway because the import taxes are really starting to hit you know non-recycled products so you've got um you know like our edge to edge you know there's a big big import tax on that 800 quid at the minute although um the uk government is you know it's reduced it to 200 so there's 200 pound on every um ton of that that comes in but of course the recycled the tamar cycle stuff gets around that you know, because it's got the recycled stuff in. So, um, so you know, it's just, it we're just going to be using more and more of the stuff, and that's that's a blooming good thing because we're not having all the waste, are we? You know, it does. You know, I do look at sort of all the bowels we've got in the yard, and that I think, oh, there is a lot of plastic we're using there, a lot, a lot of plastic. But if we can use it again and again and again, jobs are good, isn't it? Like, you know, job is a good one. Um, it goes from this sort of, you know, this sort of, you know, evil thing that plastics, you know, the, the perception of plastic is at the minute, to, um, 
you know, you've only got to have it once, and then it. So, you know, all you've got to do is just, re, you know, you, you know, get to Helix to recycle it for you. Jobs are good. So, um, you know, I think we're all going to be using it. You know, not only just for like the, you know, the environmental benefits, but again for the cost. You know, and that's what. You know, a lot of farmers, like ourselves, worry about the cost lot. You know, you've got to keep your cost down. And, um, you know, if it's cheaper to get um, Tamacycle, for example, you're going to buy it, ain't you? You know, especially if it's the same quality as what you've been using. So, um, so it really was eye-opening, like, you know, and got a lot of answers to the questions that you might not have thought... Um, you know, might have thought gone the other way, like like the quality and that, like you know, you like often the perception is that recycled stuff and it's good, but like I say, it is. <laughs> this is good, and um, you know when we get to sort of you know spring and that we start doing our silage and that, um, we will get uh, some tamar cycle net and uh, just we will see how it performs. Simple as. Now there is just one more thing I found out on the tour. Um, the factory at Helix, the big shredder there that we saw. It's a big rotating drum in there. That's shredding up. Shredding up fine. Now, surprisingly, that doesn't like hammers and massive rocks. A bit like combines, choppers and balers. They're not a great fan of them either. For the, for the baler twine, our biggest issue is uh, actually foreign objects. Uh, so, uh, what, what, like what is a collection of yeah, this, this is a German stone, and uh, here we have a French stone. I thought they were just like, you know, bits of art or something. No, you've no, got, no, you no. got a hammerhead there. It's a hammerhead, yeah. Yeah, the shredder didn't really like it. The, the, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll love that going through it. <laughs> so yeah. obviously, the cleaner the you know, the twine and the net wrap you get, the easier it is for you. So, yeah. um, That's actually something I largely underestimated. I would have. I had expected the material to be much cleaner. Yeah. And uh, you obviously have met many farmers, and that's the trouble. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so please don't chuck them in with a net wrap on the twine because uh, it don't really do the shredder a lot of good. Put the hammer back in the toolbox where it belongs. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. I will see you on the next one. Ta-ta!